uh, when actually we'll, later on we'll, we'll be creating some some new materials that aren't in the library because there's there's a different type of wood and things so that will that will show you the the library aspect um, right one one problem that 3d studio has uh, which a lot of kind of you know professional kind of renderers and people kind of moan on about is that it it doesn't have what's called a linear workflow and I'm not to be honest I'm not super, super really up to date on all that stuff but it it make it does make problems when you're choosing colors and and I find it very difficult to try and match say an RGB color that I've got control of in Photoshop uh, into a color that works the same way in in uh, in 3d studio so what I tend to do is 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 create just a very small JPEG of the color that I'm I'm wanting and then you get a, it behaves much better so I'll just just demonstrate that um, I'll just open one of the photographs um, I'll just one of our site photos to so I was I was having trouble trying to get the color right for the for the existing entrance way you know it's all pretty scabby it's all faded in the and washed away and stuff but uh, uh, what I find is, is is better to do is actually just kind of sample a color in in Photoshop okay and then create a very small JPEG just to go to file new and just do a custom JPEG basically 100 by 100 will do and then paint that color in and save that as your color so that's what you'll find in the in the materials library folder is there there's a few colors in there so we've got the entrance dark and the entrance light and I've also got some for the stone as well these are just plain sandy looking shades they've not got textures to them they're just they're just the same color throughout that throughout that square but it, it kind of behaves better I find it much easier to get materials to work better so in in 3d studio if I call up a sandy stone color for the window surrounds so we'll get our light our materials editor and we want to get a material okay so you can you can create a library at any time so if I just close a couple of these so I've got a bit of space at the bottom okay right click here so right click in that area you can create a new material library and let's it's going to the default location at the moment but you can save it wherever you want so this becomes you know your library effectively uh, my library too many Y's okay so here's my library at the top it's, there's nothing to open there because there's, there's no materials in it but you know if I wanted that material in my library then it starts to, to build up so you can you can make as many as you want and you know if you make changes to them you need to remember to save the library again you have to right click here and save your library otherwise you know any changes they're not going to go with the library again um, so it does take a bit of kind of care in remembering you know did I make a change there do I need to save my library better to save it just in case okay but I don't want to keep that one so I'm just going to right click that and close that material library don't save it before closing yeah. okay so what I was going to do was the surrounds to the windows so I'm just using one of these stone light or stone medium I'll, I'll go for a stone light okay and then we can choose the objects so if I get the selection tool okay so I'm putting it on my window surrounds okay but it does because it uses a JPEG because there's a JPEG in there it needs mapping coordinates but they don't have to be complicated ones so UVW map 
and box so it goes on every surface real world map size that's nice and easy okay so there's there'll, there'll be quite a few objects like that so that was the light one I'm going to put that onto these that's gone on no it's not on the window surrounds that's the roof cornice so I want it on there as well and you're better to UVW map separately I, w I wouldn't pick like five or six objects at the same time and UVW map them at the same time because that that can get a bit messy to unpick you, you are better to UVW map them separately I think okay so box real world again nice and easy uh, I've got a lead material here there's quite a bit of that here so I'm going to pull that in from the library okay got lead this uses a JPEG. Uh, should come up with a JPEG in a second. Ah, right. Now this one, this one, I think needs updated. I knew there was one that had slipped through the net here. So this is my lead material. So this one at the moment hasn't got a JPEG assigned to it. So I'm going to add. I want to add a bitmap to that. So you go into maps, bitmap from my maps folder on the desktop. Can't see the wood for the trees, there it is. And I've got lead in here somewhere, old lead. There we go, it's quite a quite a convincing image of lead, this one. I quite I thought that was quite realistic. Kind of you get that kind of greeniness in there. There's grey, there's green, there's blue, there's purple. Lead's a funny colour material. Okay, so we'll use that. Okay, let's have a wee look at that. It's looking a bit flat at the moment. So I'll go back up to the main area and it's saying a bit of reflection there, but it's the material's too rough to, to have a reflection. So if we make it softer, if we make it a bit not so rough, and we've got a bit of metalness in there as well so that looks quite convincing like kind of polished lead so that's good right now what I want to do is replace the one that's in the library so you are better to just dump it and bring the new one in otherwise you end up with lead one and lead two so I'm just gonna put that back into the library and save the library before I forget here. Okay, I knew there was a material that I'd forgotten to uh, to deal with. Okay, so that's going on to our lead work. So I've got all sorts of lead shapes here. Assign the material, UVW map it, and the scale for this one is about, if we go for a box mapping again, but half a metre by half a metre by half a metre. So 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 that should look reasonably believable okay what we got next we've got some fair bit of concrete here and there um, the site walls I think we'll use a slightly darker stone for that so let's do that one um, I need to get the material first so we've got stone medium. Okay. And I want that onto the site walls. Needs mapped. Okay, box mapping again. This one can be real world, one by one by one. That's no problem. Um, we've got the road and the curbs and the pavement to do so let's get those let's get those three materials in straight away so it was road missed that road um, grey one is getting used for curbs and grey two is getting used for roads sorry for pavements so they're nice easy assignments just drag them on path curbs and road Okay, I've got a few blocks here. I don't actually know what these buildings are made out of, so I'm, I'm just going to use the grey for that. 
because they're, they're really they're not that important and I'm not too worried about them. Ah, now that has gone on to another object that I didn't want it to go on to. So what we need to do here is split this in the same way that we did with the roof. So we want to edit this mesh. Okay. Um, somehow my roof has gone a bit funny there. It probably it's okay. It's probably because I'm I I I I C I C I C. Right, right, right. Careful, careful here, Richie. Okay, switch that off. Right. Notice this has got edit mesh and editable mesh on it. Because we did that right at the start when we switched off the smoothing, we basically added the edit mesh modifier. So to make this kind of independent, we need to collapse the commands that are here. So you right click this and collapse all. Yes. Okay. This is now independent of the roof. What I should probably do here is Yeah, we need to collapse that one as well, I think. Yep, that'd be wise. So it keeps its oops, its UVWs have been uh, absorbed as, as well. That's not so good. But uh, so this one's editable now face level um, probably better to go to the plan view so I can grab just the area that I'm interested in okay so I just want the faces in this area just clipped the other object there so better try that a bit more carefully that's better we've just got this um, and we'll detach that and we'll call it for our so this is four rows angle entrance. Use caps. Number four rows angle entrance. So that can get a different material. Okay, so let's let's give four rows angle a, a darker wood than the others because it's a pretty. It's just really painted, a painted wooden box. So I've got wood one here. I'm going to pull that in and let's make this a darker version so we'll call this wood 3 and make it much darker much chocolatier okay and that is going to go on the 4R entrance and it can go into the library we've got this kind of chocolatey wood now stick that into the library as well and just save your library as you go. Okay, uh, concrete next. We've got this. Uh, I've got concrete used for the kind of steps and landings. So we'll put concrete onto those. So we want to pull concrete in from here. Okay. If I select the concrete object for our concrete, uh, I'll collapse that again. Now let's each time I find one of these that have got the the you notice this is in italics. Okay, that means it was the edit mesh was used on multiple objects at the same time. Whether it's two or twenty, that indicates that it's part of a a kind of a group of objects that got edited together. So probably best to just collapse that. Okay, then we'll assign our material to the selection. Okay, you just saw the concrete change colour slightly there. And then add some mapping. And the mapping for the concrete is 5 metres by 5 metres by 5 metres. It's a big JPEG, this one. It's a very high resolution JPEG. Okay, I'm thinking of what other materials we need on this. There can't be many more. Um, chimney pots. Chimney pots. Do, 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 do. Oh, glass. We haven't done glass. The obvious one. We've not got any windows yet. 
okay so we've got a simple glass material this is the um, I've only put in a single face for the glass so nothing nothing fancy as far as the glass goes so we want to select the glass objects better to do that by name we've got for, for our glass assign that to the selection that was a nice easy one okay so we're kind of seeing through the building now a bit let's let's make this view shaded so we can see see what we've still got to do uh, we haven't got any grass yet on the back um, that can stay white the window frames can stay white we've got chimney pots and gutters the white the gutters were maybe white at some point but they they're certainly not white now uh, and we've got this raw iron shape above the door as well which would need to be kind of shiny and black so a few materials to do so how about the raw iron let's let's create a layer for that a material for that wrought iron okay base color you know, ideally solid black but we probably wouldn't be able to see anything if we did that so I'm just going to make it very nearly black and this is the trouble with 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 3d studio it doesn't use the same kind of ways of describing numbers that any other software does um, which is a bit awkward I'm not sure if we can sample off 3d studio uh, let's just see if that works I doubt it will um, I think we'll have to let's try and sample the blue that's on where is the dropper going? Ah, it doesn't let you leave. It doesn't let you leave 3D Studio to do that. Didn't think it would. Okay. Anyway, want to be very nearly black. Okay, but we kind of want to be shiny as well. So let's put the reflections up, and the roughness is at full blast there. That doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of doesn't look perfect, which is what you want, but it looks shiny and black. I'll go with that. Maybe a hint of metalness. But you're looking through a paint actually, so it 0.1. That'll do. Okay. So wrought iron is going onto this object. Okay, and we want to put it into our library as well, to save making it again ever. So get material and put the wrought iron in there. R comes after O. Okay, Let's save the library. Okay, um, the grass at the back of the, the site. Okay, pull it off. Drag it onto the site. Okay. UV mapping for that. If I select the object first, it would help. UVW map, and for grass, it's planar and nine meters by nine meters. Looks okay. Okay. Uh, what else did we have? We've done the concrete um, I'm going to do the door kind of specially uh, chimney pots that was it chimney pots so we need something that looks a bit like terracotta for chimney pots terracotta okay this just just this could just be a simple color okay maybe a bit bit more orangey than that Quite good, so that's our terracotta colour. Okay, and that's going on the chimneys and into the library. ST terracotta. Okay. Right, apart from the doors, I think everything there has been dealt with. Yeah. So what I'll do is, is kind of 
let's just do a test render at that and see how it's looking now. We should, it should be a bit better now with the windows done and the lead and everything. So it's looking quite tidy. Bit gloomy and that is the that is the exposure control. So so rendering exposure control and 15 is a bit strong. I usually go for something like 13 and a half and we get something that looks a bit more like a very bright Scottish day. So let's have a quick look. That's a bit better. Uh, I'm going to leave the gutters white actually, they, they stand out a bit better. Kept as white. 